Are you serious? There is stuff happening around the world, folks. Things that's a little bit troubling to me because of what biblical prophecy tells us to happen in the last days. So get a cup of coffee and let's take another peek at this thing because there's some stuff happening in Egypt and in Damascus and there's meteorites exploding and there's explosions just south of New Orleans uh, in the ocean there in the, in the marshes. Is this this butane gas? Is this has to do with that swamp cavern, that sinkhole? What's going on? Are we getting the truth? What? Again, let's just take a look at it. First of all, uh, there has been a meteorite exploding over the sky uh, over Cape Town, South Africa. Residents across Cape Town claim to have sighted a meteorite uh, yesterday, which would have been March the 12th, 2013, after what appears to have been a fireball exploded in the sky. It's said to have been sighted just after noon, according to Nicola Loring, an outreach astronomer of the South African uh, Astronomical uh, Observatory, as they have received about four or five different reports, now more reports, since that have come in. It was a green and blue light with a white tail that was reported to have appeared to be a fireball, which is a bright meteor. Fireballs caused by dust formed in space that enter Earth's atmospheres. There have been two meteor showers in March, one peaking today, March 13th, and this could be what's related. Once again, folks, the Bible says the heavens will be shaken as a fig tree casts her untimely figs. And so we're seeing this with the meteorite hit Russia. There were 50 confirmed meteorites that during that 48-hour that period. So, we're seeing biblical signs in the heavens. There'll be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Distress of nations with perplexity, and the sea and the waves roaring, it says in Luke 21, 25. But also, we've got another issue. Let's go to, let's go to south of New Orleans. A fire burning after a tugboat barge hits a Louisiana gas pipeline. Uh, a fire that ignited when a gas pipeline was hit by a tugboat, pushing the oil barge, burned into the morning hours today, 3.13.13, at a bayou south of New Orleans, amid reports that oil had leaked into the water. Hold it a minute! There was still liquid petroleum in the gas. There was still liquid petroleum gas in the 19-mile pipeline, and authorities were waiting for it to burn out, according to the Coast Guard Petty Officer Alex Washington. Coast Guard uh, is also saying the collision happened about 6 p.m. last yesterday evening on, on March 12, 2013, um, at the Bayou Parat, Parat in a marshy area near uh, Jefferson Parishes and uh, 30 miles south of New Orleans. Now, the tugboat and the barge were engulfed in flames, heavy smoke billowing from the scenes. All crew members, here's what I'm concerned about. What about the fact that you, you got this big cavern, this, this sinkhole, massive. I mean, how many acres is it now? It's outrageous. It's outrageous. And uh, filled with gases that are, that, are, that are very high concern of a massive explosion. And now you've got tugboats exploding just south of New Orleans. You've got pipelines leaking water into the, and, and petroleum into the waters. You had the BP oil spill three years ago. That didn't do us any favors. I mean, this whole thing down there, it feels like it's a mess down there. And I don't think we're getting the truth. And the cancer rate has ex exponentially went up. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody wants to talk about BP. Nobody wants to talk about the United States government and the cleanup efforts. Nobody wants to discuss the high rate of cancer going on down there, but the Bible tells us that these diseases and plagues would increase in the last days. And speaking of increasing, troops are now attacking the Syrian capital of Damascus all around it. Syrian troops are being shelled, and they're shelling rebel strongholds on the edges of Damascus from multiple rocket launchers based in the hilltops. 
on March the 12th, 2013, while new clashes have erupted an intensifying battle for control over the Aleppo's International Airport, nearby military bases in Syria's north side of Damascus. The thud of ar artillery and mortars reverberates across the capital of Damascus from the fighting in the northeastern neighborhoods of Jabbar and the rebel-held area south of Damascus. Activists said several people were wounded. Opposition fighters trying to topple Syrians' President Bashar Assad have stepped up mortar attacks on Damascus in recent weeks, striking deep, deep, deeper into the ever heart of the city of Damascus. Rebel fighters tried in the past to establish brigades in Damascus, but were pushed back into the suburbs as, and re, as regime forces are fighting back. So it's becoming a ruinous heap. As Isaiah 17 once said, the burden of Damascus, behold, it is no longer a city, but has become a ruinous heap. And then it says in Jeremiah 49, verses 23 through 27, uh, that Damascus would begin to uh, oh, cry. And where is the city of the joy? It's, it will become to be wax feeble in frozen in fear. The young men will die in the streets. The people will flee the city. It will no longer be a city, folks. And there will be wall, fire in the walls of Damascus, in the palaces thereof. So it's getting ugly, and the scriptures are fulfilling themselves in this last days as you begin to look at the Middle East war going on in Syria, a specifically Damascus. Assad's regime will fall, but it's ugly as it's being fought out there. It's turning the entire city into nothing but one big, ugly battlefield. And there's some food shortages now for Mohammed Mercy to deal with. Not only does he have uh, the fact that he's trying to impose Sharia law, not only has he declared a holy jihad on Jerusalem, but now his own people are rising up against him, forcing him to shut down YouTube for 30 days, forcing him to declare martial law on three cities as he tries to implement with his fierceness and his cruelty, as the Bible said he would be, a fierce king and a cruel lord in Isaiah chapter 19, verses 1 through 4. But also, he's got issues with locusts devouring what few crops he had. And now because of this, uh, the wars and the uprisings and the locusts and the fact that he came against Israel, he's hungry. And now the Egyptians need wheat, and they're seeking to buy it from India. India is in talks with Egypt, the world's biggest wheat buyer to sell grain as a record harvest, swell the stockpiles at state warehouses. They have a record harvest going on in India, and a, and a drought and a famine going on in Egypt. Uh, the South Asian nation is seeking to be included on Egypt's General Authority for Supply Commodities list of approved and wheat suppliers. Egyptian Trade and Supply Minister is saying in an email yesterday that India is ready to submit offers of wheat exports and imports facilities to Egypt. Um, India, the world's second biggest wheat producer. Did you know that? Second biggest wheat producer in the world. Uh, authorized exports of 5 million metric tons from state reserves by private companies to be sent to Egypt. India's shipments are adding to global supplies as Australia predicts a 13% increase in its wheat harvest. Snow replenishes the soil moistures in the U U.S., the biggest shipper of wheat, but it has declined. Also, Argentina is going to ship some wheat. So there's a problem in Egypt. They have a shortage of wheat. They have wars and rumors of wars. They have a fierce king, a cruel lord. They have civil unrest. They're, and yet they spend their time buying, they spend their time condemning Israel. They spend their energy declaring a holy jihad. They spend their energy burning Christian homes and churches down. They spend their energy crucifying Christians. They spend their energy expanding Muslim brotherhood in the region. Are you saved? We're living in the apocalyptic. Something biblical's going on. 
with the signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Be saved.